You're listening to an Anderson Entertainment production. This episode, we've got a ticket to the stars in Fab Facts. Our holiday plans are being ruined in the randomizer. And who was that hairless gent? It's me, it's isn't it? Oh. versus the hood. No, oh, that was me. You. That's all coming up in pod 223 of the hair suit and bald Jerry Anderson podcast. Always. Let's get started. Let's go. Spectrum is green. The Jerry Anderson Podcast with Jamie Anderson and Richard James. Hello, Richard. Ah, well, hello, Jamie. How are you? I'm all right, thank you very much, yes. I th- Good. I think before we um, go full speed ahead into mm. the Jerry Anderson podcast, should we just make uh, make note of the sombre day of release? Uh, yes. Which is the, uh, tw- the 19th of September. I hope that's right. <laughs> and that I've not got that wrong. I think, I think that's right, yes. Because uh, it is the, the day of the Queen's funeral. And uh, so obviously we uh, are very, very sad about that and uh, share our sympathies with everyone in the UK and beyond uh, who's been touched by the news. However, yeah. I think we are going to try and keep things bright and jolly. And, you know, if you want to make this a day well, of mourning, then maybe listen tomorrow on or, tuesday that's yeah, right exactly, exactly. Yeah. um yeah. yeah put it in your pocket for later as my mum would say uh, absolutely yes uh, so yeah. we will be uh, here with the usual mixture of uh, hopefully mostly yeah. smiley you know positive gubbins well two facts while we're on the subject of uh, her, her majesty the queen oh yes uh did you know that 94 percent of the world's population were born during her reign. Oh, well, that doesn't surprise me, actually, because she was Isn't that extraordinary? reigning for a very, very long time. Indeed. And secondly, 30% of Brits claimed to have met her or seen her. Really? Yes. That's over 20 million people. Goodness me. Well, I'm so, one of those 20 million people. Oh? Yes. Are you now? Really? Yeah. I didn't meet her, but I saw her um, mm-hmm. when Dad was given his MBE. Uh, ah. So what year would that have been? 2001, maybe? Mm-hmm. I think. And we yeah. went to Buckingham Palace, and it was all very fancy, and we had to show our invites at the gates, and people going under the under the taxi with mirrors, checking for devices and all sorts of stuff. And it was a, it was a very nice and fancy thing to do. Uh, and Dad was incredibly nervous about getting his MBE, about doing the wrong thing, and what was he supposed yeah, to say, and how was he supposed to yeah. act. And mum and I went and sat up in the gallery and all the uh, people receiving their awards went off into a sort of holding area. And we sat and waited for him to be read out and they read his name and he came forward and stood in front of the Queen and they spoke for yeah. n- not very long, but mum and uh-huh. I were trying to work out what was going on. And anyway, he was <laughs> given his MBE and he walked off up the red carpet and I was just so desperate to find out what it was that she'd said, you know, Yes. Was, did, did she ask about, you know, whatever happened to the Mysterons or... Yeah, what about know, the second season of UFO? Exactly, were the inhabitants of Moonbase Alpha okay? So I asked Dad <laughs> and um, he arrived in front of her and she said, and what do you do? And he said, I make television programmes for children. And that was it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> there was no further oh. comment. Okay. Right. She put not out a, a fan of Fireball XL5. Apparently then. not. She put out her hand, <laughs> uh, which uh, was the universal symbol for we're done here, please leave. Yes, uh, move along. So there we go. So if you're ever wondering, oh, we're, we're not sure uh, if Her Late Majesty the Queen was a fan of any Anderson shows, but if she she was, she didn't certainly didn't nerd out on the no. day that Dad got his MBA. <laughs> That's right. Ah, uh, well, there we are. Now, uh, also, uh, uh, we must really address... Uh, something a couple of weeks ago in uh, our podcast we did Must suggest we? didn't we that we that we had done 221 episodes yes uh, and neither of us had taken a sickie or a day off and we'd both been here for every single pod yep. unlike the nick and benji show Absolutely. where it seems they regularly abandoned post they did for their podcast yes well then i became very ill <laughs> you did <you> poor <laughs> very <chap>. ill yeah <laughs> shivering and sweating in bed for four days and uh 
For a little while, I was thinking, well, I don't think I could do the next podcast. <laughs> I was suggesting, Jamie, I think you really ought to talk to maybe Chris Dale or Chris Thompson or AC, yes. anyone, because I don't think I'm going to be able to make it. Yeah, you were Ooh. you were trying to get backups um, ready yeah. to fill in for you. Well, I'm very Absolutely. glad you're here. They would have done a, a sterling job, but it would have been very strange oh, doing it without like, you, particularly after we tempted fate by saying that we'd I done know. every single one. <laughs> I know. I'm going to keep my thoughts to myself from now on, I think. Yes. Well, unless you you can turn it to something more positive uh, somehow manifest oh, yes uh, untold yes i'd like a million or... pounds please there you go and some world peace while you're at it could you manage that oh, oh sure but in that order yes of course makes total well, sense if they're both if they're both gonna come you know let's have the money first yeah, and then yeah, world yeah. peace absolutely no, no, no i'd be very silly of course <laughs> wouldn't be sad at all no but i'm very glad you're better because you were Thank very you. poorly and I, I'm, I'm not going to to kind of play your voice notes that you sent me but oh, goodness yeah. me you sounded awful <laughs> you so yes. bad they are, in a sense, though, I think two or three voice notes that I sent you, they are a record of the glories of modern medication and yes. science. Yeah. As each one got successively better and stronger. <laughs> it, it, yeah, just amazing. Uh, but I'm very, very uh, glad you made a good recovery. Anyway, so uh, now we've done all of that intro. Oh, yeah. Um, him mm. over there, you've been hearing about his uh, illness. It's um, Sicky James. Yes, you can call me that, just for one week only. <laughs> uh, I'm Jamie Anderson, and uh, over there, uh, arriving at some point through a door, I hope, is Chris Dale, who will be yes. bringing you the randomizer because he's the randomizer. He's got a random yes. Jerry Anson show and episode all hail to tell you the all about All Hail the Dale, indeed. But there's yes. a load of other stuff, too. Richard James, yeah. if you wouldn't mind, mm. I mean, yes. take your time, but what else is coming oh. up? What other positive gubbins have we got? Oh, positive gubbins. I like that. That's surely an umbrella name for the podcast. Well, we've got, of course, Fab Facts coming up any moment, uh, whereby Jamie flicks through a book of facts. I shout the word fab. He stops on the random page associated with the word fab, reads out a fact from that page, and we then discuss that fact. Yes. I've just summed it all up. You don't have to. Uh, <laughs> we've then got some Jerry Anderson newsy news news news, whereby Jamie brings us news from the Jerry Anderson universe. And then we've got... Oh, well, is this an interview with... Uh, no, Chris Tom no, no, no. What's so now going on I've this week? I, I I've confused the things. I've confused things. Because yes. last week we had Chris yes. Thompson talking about the UFO. I and you'll we'll talk about more that later. And then I said gotcha. next week we've got Chris Bentley, which we're going to be this week. But we uh, don't have yeah, Chris uh, Bentley this Chris week. Bentley. Ah, right. Because uh, I wanted to make sure that we, we give our lovely listeners a sample of Thunderbirds versus The Hood before its release at the end of this uh, month. Uh, and because Chris's good. interview is so long, that would have meant we mm -hmm. run into October and then you wouldn't get the sample until after it was already out, uh, which seems silly. So, no, this week is the first 15 minutes of Thunderbirds versus The Hood, The Vanishing Ray, or, as oh, Wayne Forrester great. likes to say it, The Vanishing Ray. I, yeah. don't, know, I don't know what who Ray is or why he's suddenly invisible, <laughs> uh, but apparently uh, that's the Thunderbirds story. So, uh, yes, we'll be giving you that uh, very, very soon it's adapted from the tv tv century 21 comics and right. and the full cast do a great job and it is a full cast audio drama rather than uh, an enhanced audio book like Ooh. peril in peru and terror from the stars etc so nice. it's much more dynamic and it's got none of that yeah. narration stuff as lovely as the narration is from wayne it yeah. can be a little bit ponderous in that 60s style this feels sure. much more up to date and i think it's very cool indeed so i hope you enjoy it oh Lovely, lovely Wayne Forrester. He was um, voicing something uh, recently for us, Jamie, as I know you're aware. Uh, and he kept mistaking the word emitter, which I think is, you know, a pretty run-of-the-mill word, an emitter, mm. something that emits something, yeah, for an emanator. Which is a kind of a cool 50s sci-fi word, I'd say, isn't it? But that's not the say, word that it? was on the page. Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> the emanator. <laughs> he wasn't even aware he was doing it. It's funny, isn't it? Yeah, it is amazing. Well, that's very much like that Benedict Cumberbatch thing and the um, penguins or penguins or whatever uh, oh, he said. Penguins. Peng yes. Penguins, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah really odd. So. Uh, anyway, so yes, all of that to come. The randomizer, of course, and then in between, uh, our lovely podstrons have been getting in touch, as ever, podcast at jerryanderson.com. They've been posting on our Facebook group and also posting on our YouTube channel. The Jerry Anderson podcast is available on a myriad of platforms, mm. many of which you can have in your ears ad-free. But I think on the YouTube channel, we've got still eight, 900 people listening every week. Uh, via YouTube. Great. Yes. Good for them. Uh, and they comment underneath as well. So I should be reading out some of those. Excellent. Well, yeah. I can't wait. I've seen a few of those emails come in. There's some interesting questions and yes. nice ones and all sorts. Um, Quite right. But before yeah. we reach them, I would love to deliver you mm. a fab fact. Yes. Would that be all right? Oh. 
Uh, I mean, if that's the best you can do. Oh, here we go. Mm, starting to feel a bit ill again. Now, time for this week's Fab Facts. Well, you've already said what Fab Fact is at the start of this, so... Um, exactly. Should we just do a Fab Fact? Yeah, go on then. Okay, here comes the book. Fab! Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh. Just, just trying to peek over your shoulder. What is that? Mm, well, ah, oh. This one concerns yeah. space flight. Yeah, nice. I don't know if you've noticed, but it uh, actually appears in the news quite a lot these days the old <laughs> space flight. It does. Whether the launches does. are successful or not, or mm, hiatus is required. Space flight, perhaps. Yes. Um, yeah, anyway, uh, you may remember, was it the end of last year or earlier this year? Um, a certain William Shatner went up. Oh, yeah. Uh, with uh, with Jeff uh, Bezos. Bezos, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so, well, I mean, I think when William Shatner, a.k.a. Uh, James T. Kirk, actually gets to visit the stars, it can make things feel a little bit as if the lines between science fact and science fiction are getting a little bit blurry, can't it? Yeah, just a bit. But did you know hmm. that one Mr. Jerry Anderson was once offered a seat on a spaceship as well, just like what? Captain Kirk? I did not know that. <laughs> well, now you do. And that's the wow. end of this week. No, no. Then, but, but, let, hang on, let hang me on, give on. you some details. Yeah, uh, cool. So the Ansari X Prize was a competition that was organised to encourage private space flight companies to develop a reusable crewed rocket. Mm. The carrot at the end of this stick was 10 million US dollars. Oh. Quite, quite an inspiring wow. number. Uh, yeah. Now, over 26 teams participated, it says here. I mean, over 26, is that 27? Uh, who knows? But uh, over 26 teams participated from <laughs> 1996 until 2004, when a winner was eventually declared. Uh-huh. One of those teams was a UK-based company, Star Chaser Industries. That's quite a cool name, isn't it? Oh, it sounds, I like it. Sounds quite Thunderbirdsy to me. It does, uh, yes. Now, Star Chaser was led by physics teacher Steve Bennett. And I would say a physics teacher. That feels like a fairly safe pair of hands. Mm-hmm. Um, now, think? guessing by the name of some of his rockets, both completed and uncompleted, he must have been an Ander fan. Okay, go on. Because his rocket names include... Yeah. Thunderstar. <laughs> right. Tempest. Ah. And Project Thunderbird. Oh, well, that's a bit blatant. <laughs> well, I mean, they're all quite clearly yeah. connected, I would say. Yeah. Well, it was during the development of the unrealised Project Thunderbird that Dad met Steve at a rap party for Lavender Castle. Um, mm. And that rap party was held at the Fab Cafe in Manchester, for anyone wondering. Of course, yeah. That meeting led to moral support from Dad for Steve in the fan club magazine Fab, and allegedly Steve offered Dad a seat on that space flight, to which he responded, Yeah. Thank you, but no. Oh, <laughs> really? So, yeah, sadly, <laughs> okay. Dad never uh, joined the ranks of uh, what, Billi- no. Billiam. I'll try that again. So, sadly, Dad would never have joined the ranks of Shatner, Bezos, or even John Glenn. Um, yeah, he do- not that John Glenn. No, not that John Glenn, no. but spaceman John Glenn. <laughs> yeah, uh, Dad, in fact, did not wish he was a spaceman, although he did enjoy a <laughs> ride or two on Concord instead. Uh, ah, now, I've, pretty close. I've got some footage of him talking about this invitation and saying, you know, as exciting as the prospect was, there was something deeply unsettling about being not very far away from an experimental reusable rocket uh, that made him a little bit too nervous to give it a go. Yeah, but you see, yeah. I think if he'd ever had the opportunity to go up in the in the Vomit Comet, for example, he would have mm. loved to have done that. Right, um, okay. Because he was so, so fascinated by flight and aviation, it would have been tempting, I'm sure. Um, yeah. But I, I think the kind of experimental nature of it just meant it was one step too far for him. Uh, now, this is perhaps an indelicate question, but I've got to ask it anyway, Jamie, because you know what I'm like. <laughs> Nothing stops Richard James. Uh, no, upon your uh, on your dad's death, was there any consideration, I, know, I don't even know how you would go about doing this, but to sending part, some of his ashes I- into space? I know there are other, other people associated with, with sci-fi, I think Gene Roddenberry and certainly James Doohan have, mm. uh, have been sprinkled in the lower atmosphere. Yes, I, I mean, it... There, there was a little bit of 
mention of it. Yeah. Um, but I think it, it just became problematic to arrange and that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and I think actually his sort of final resting place for his ashes at Pinewood Studios is some somehow more appropriate. Yeah. Um, yeah. Than than firing That's him right. off into space. But I mean, <laughs> uh, I can't remember the name of the satellite that was sent out a long time ago now maybe a Jupiter one or something like that it'll come to me later on obviously once we've recorded this fab fact of course uh, yep but his name was put onto a gold disc that was sent out with one of the uh, one of the satellites oh. that was launched out into the solar system maybe 15-20 oh, years ago okay um, I'll have to look wow. into that and obviously mm. uh, our lovely friend Dr. David Parker from the European Space Agency has spent, sent Thunderbird 3 uh, yeah. up into the uh, the ISS yeah. and we've right. also had Spacehawk from Terrorhawks go into low orbit oh, yes in a rocket so you know Anderson yeah. stuff has been that out works. there even if Dad Absolutely. didn't go up with Project Thunderbird which was sadly never realised yeah uh, so I'm well. going to try and find uh, the clip of him talking about that opportunity and we'll see if we can put it up on YouTube or maybe post Lovely. it in the Postron's Facebook group um, yeah. but for now I think that brings us crashing back down to earth very appropriately <laughs> <laughs> with the end of this week's Space fact! Oh, space rocket <laughs> okay. fact. Yeah, yeah, yeah that do. works, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Good. I'm, so, I'm sure we've had space fact before. How, how could we reach no, pod number 223 of the Jerry Addison podcast <laughs> and not have had a space fact before? I've no idea. But, uh, yeah, there we are. Anyway, let's hand it over to our lovely podstrons who've been emailing uh, in the last week or so to uh, podcast at jerryanderson.com. For example, uh, here's one from Dual Mirrored Gridwork who says, Hello, gang slash fellow podstrons and both you dear and wonderful sirs. Oh, hello. It's quite nice, isn't it? Lovely. Mm. Yeah, great intro. Yeah, uh, Dual Mirrored Gridwork says, with last week's pod, I just happened to see that every episode of Stargate SG-1, uh, oh, sorry, rather, that very episode of Stargate SG-1 recently, this is the one with the puppetry sequence, and I immediately thought of the influence of the Andiverse watching it. That makes me want to ask this question. Now, are you ready for this, Jamie? Yes. I've noticed with, I did see this in Thunderbirds mostly, but I don't know about the other series that have them right off hand, that the male puppets seem to have a head or neck that is going into the top of the torso between the shoulder area, while Lady Penelope and other females seem to be a kind of a ball and socket where it seems the head rests upon a rod or something of that nature, somewhat the opposite that, uh, to the male's head and neck construction. Could you please explain the reason for this? <laughs> I, I I actually don't know the precise neck structure of the yeah. puppets, but I do know that do the no, the female puppets were given a different neck structure in order to yeah. get, make them look more elegant, basically. Okay, yeah. Sort of men sure. men's necks versus women's necks, essentially. And I can yeah. kind of get that. You know, you would generally get a sort of a broader, wider neck. Yeah, on a male character than a female, generally yeah. speaking, you know, across the board. So that mm -hmm. was all I think, just to add to the perceived femininity of a puppet, essentially. Yeah. Also, seeing as how as I'm, I'm a scale fanatic, I noticed that in the Andiverse scale chart that Chris Thompson did, uh, is the ship from Doppelganger facing backwards or the opposite direction of all the other craft? Would you be nice if it was? <laughs> I don't actually know. Isn't that terrible? I'm going to go and look it up right now because I, I, if, it, if it is like that, I hadn't noticed. And clever Chris has done a clever thing, and yeah, I, and I haven't even noticed it. Isn't that terrible? <laughs> uh, also, is there any story or fiction that shows what the Mysterons really look like? I've got a picture somewhere uh, of them, and their look reminded me a bit of the Mechanoids from Doctor Who. Well, then they're, they're non-corporeal, aren't they? Yeah. So, yeah, you can't. Apparently, this picture was from a comic strip or story. Oh, there may well be, yeah. I, yeah, yeah. I, who knows? I mean, with a lot of these things, you know, their physical or otherwise state kind of varied a bit depending on who was telling the story and where it was from, whether it was from the yeah. TV show or the comic or whatever. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, yes, the dove from Doppelganger is the opposite way around in Chris's. Uh chart well done Lovely. chris i can't believe well i never done. noticed that i you know i feel like <laughs> i've let myself outed. down uh i've yeah. let the company down so yeah. nice work chris and well spotted 
There we go. With ever-loving fanfare for the Andiverse, FAB, and that's from DMG. Uh, Greetings and salutations, chaps, says Dominic Riley. I hope you're both doing well. Fantastic pod today. So, as some people may know, I'm a bit of an aircraft nut. Well, recently, while watching video of an aircraft taking off, I realised something. That the engine sound of the Rolls-Royce Conway fitted to the Vickers VC-10, the Handley Page Victor, Boeing 707-420, and Douglas DC-840 is identical to the sound used by Fireflash and RTL2 when they taxi. It's only taken me 20 years to realise this. I knew the Rolls-Royce Derwent and Avon were used when Kraft began driving, uh, diving rather, and the Hawker Hunter's blue note for aircraft flying past, but I never realised that the Conway was also used. Just a little factoid, I noted. Keep up the great work. And that's from Dominic Riley. Nice factoiding. Yes, Dominic. he's been getting his ears in, hasn't he? <laughs> uh, now, this is quite a long one. Uh, I might say that for a bit later. Hello, Rich and Jamie, says uh, Simpsons Clips 24. You thought you could escape me, he says, but here I come with another and a wrong. Yes. Another one? This is where people keep getting things wrong about Jerry Anderson. Uh, Simpsons Clips says, I will say now that no maliciousness is intended here, but this one is aimed at a certain Mr. James Lionel Anderson. Never heard of him. Having listened to some previous editions of the podcast, I've often felt a twinge of cosmic angst whenever I hear Jamie say that Lavender Castle is a preschool show. Now, for starters, I highly doubt that a preschool show would contain episodes like A Stitch in Time, or in Friends terms, the one where everyone gets killed but it's undone, or The Collector, the one where the ship's robot finds a mummified body. That would be like putting the Space 1999 episode Dragon's Domain on CBeebies. Now then, Jamie... How do you plead to committing this and wrong? Guilty or not guilty? Yours lawfully, Judge Simpsons Clips 24. <laughs> mm? Well, I know what you mean. Yes. Uh, and I will enter my defence thusly. Yes. Generally speaking, preschool sort of means three to six in broadcaster terms. And right. sometimes they'll even call it bridge school which takes you up to seven or maybe eight. Okay. So a preschool thing can appeal to people who go to school. Yeah. Um, and I suspect also in 99, uh, when Lavender Castle was out, the Ofcom rules were a little bit looser. And equally sure. because they're fantasy characters, you can get away with stuff that you couldn't do with humans. So mm. with the Dragon's Domain parallel, you couldn't do that on a kid's thing because it's affecting humans. So it would be therefore seen to be more... Um, more visceral and uncomfortable and grim for a kid to watch. Yeah. However, I do agree with you that it, it does go above and beyond what would typically now be called preschool. Um, yeah. And it, that kind of fits with most Anderson stuff, really, where, you know, if you call Thunderbirds a kid's show, it goes far above and beyond mm. that, except That's right. that everyone would probably say, well, it was meant to be even though yeah. it, was, it was actually watched by multiple generations. And that's part of the Anderson appeal. So mm. you've hit on something yeah. there. But I Very think, good. can we agree to disagree? <laughs> I rest my case. I'm my agreeing love. to it. Uh, <laughs> Pen Quilla finally says, Hi, Jamie and Richard. I'm aware that there are various exciting projects happening at the moment in the Jerry Anderson universe. I've just received notification about the new Thunderbirds vs. The Hood audio. But I hope this doesn't mean that you've abandoned the idea of publishing the other three Thaden Thunderbirds novels, Lost World, Ring of Fire, Albanian Affair. I don't mind having to wait, but can you please confirm that we're still going to get them? It's been great fun listening to the first three in the series. Keep up the good work from pen well pen excellent question um Mm. so i was trying to explain this to the team internally the other day in the same way that big finish if you know of uh, big finish's work do various different iterations of their doctor who stuff different threads we're also experimenting with different threads of how he presents stuff so Uh right from single voice readings to enhanced single voice readings, to okay. enhanced audiobooks where you've got the full cast and a narrator and sound effects and music right through to full cast drama. So we're experimenting with full cast drama with Thunderbirds versus The Hood. Yeah. I would very much like to get the rest of the Thaden books out, yeah. but it's going to really come down to how, how popular they are. So Peril in Peru of the three books so far has been the most popular by far. I can't quite work mm. out why, but it has been. Is it the mm. cover? Is it the title? Is it the story content? Um, <laughs> so it is absolutely the intention to carry on with those hardbacks probably from early next year. But for now, we're yeah. going to experiment with the uh, the full cast audio dramas. Um, yeah. But there's no reason why they can't all coexist in time. 
But the problem is we're a tiny team. We're, you know, yeah. we're, we're a very small company. We're doing it all ourselves, really. So we can't do everything at the same time. Um, and we have to make sure what we're doing is popular with the fans across the board. So Quite right. there you go. So, I mean, Penn, if you want to make it your mission to uh, ensure that we get the, the, the next books out as soon as possible, then please tell the world how brilliant you think the, the existing ones are. Um, then hopefully we can sell some more of them. And that's a good sign that people want them. Um, yeah. So yes, anything you do to spread enough. the word always helpful. And actually, that's quite often the best way to get more of what you want is to make sure that the rest of the world knows that it's great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very good. Uh, thanks for that, and thanks for all your messages, Podstrons. Do keep them coming in uh, for next time. Podcast at jerryanderson.com. It's so easy. I'll see your email. I'll read it out. It's literally like that. It's an instant transaction. That is That's pretty much things. what happened. I mean, you don't actually read it out the minute you see it. You store them up, and then I you do. read them here. Well, no, I read them out. Prior to, to yourself, yeah, yeah, okay, <laughs> allowed, yeah. Just, <laughs> all right, fine. I was just trying to get absolute clarity there. on the process. Of course, I yes, I noticed. Thank you for uh, sharing. Yes, all for now. Good. Uh, well, while you've done all of that for now, would you like some mm. Jerry Anderson news? Oh yes, please. Good, because I got loads for you. Shall we do it? Oh yeah, great. Let's see it then. Here we go. Yes, it's the Jerry Anderson news. News, 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 news. 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 Uh, yes, okay, let's. We've already mentioned at the top of this podcast, it's a somber day today, but we're still trying to keep things uh, as, as jolly and optimistic as we can because, yeah. well, because we can and we should. Um, yeah. But just in case you've noticed, we have, as a mark of respect, changed all of our logos across social media to black. Um, oh. That's our little nod to, to Her Majesty. Um, mm. And we'll be changing the back to red uh, later this week, back to normal oh, colour. But we didn't want to make a big thing because I, fi- I feel like almost making a huge thing of it and doing lots of posts across social sort of makes it about the, yes. the brand or the company. I agree. We just wanted to do a little gentle hat tip and a kind of a yeah. thank you, mom sort of uh, symbol. So there you go. That's why all of our logos are black, in case you're wondering. Uh, yes. Now, let's move on to some news. Last week, I do hope you managed to join us for the Space 1999 Breakaway Day special oh, yes. live stream. Didn't we have that a jolly fun. time? Richard was all uh, yeah. excited wearing his uh, his tunic. My Koenig. Yes, absolutely right. Absolutely. Yes. And giving, giving the full Koenig, as they call it. You were indeed. And obviously that heralded the fantastic news that we have more Koenig tunics on the way. Um, and I, I think I said that they'd be in for the end of the month, but I think they might even be in this week uh oh you will also have seen that day the breakaway day special edition t-shirt today is the last day to order that if you want this year's breakaway day t-shirt um it will be switched off and unavailable from tomorrow morning that's uh, right. the uh, 20th of september uh, so you've had a full week to grab that but most excitingly of all i think is of course the fact that we have done a deal with David Hirsch and Robert E. Wood to release their fantastic novelised book, uh, Maybe There, The Lost Stories from Space 1999. Uh-huh. I think it's a bit of a fan's dream, this, and a, a, a really fascinating way to do it. So they've taken yeah. a load of scripts, previous drafts to the ones that were actually shot, sometimes storylines, uh-huh. sometimes earlier editions. So you've got three different versions of Breakaway in there. And the three different tellings showing how the characters evolved, how the storytelling evolved, how the locations changed. So you almost get to enter three parallel universes to the one that actually was was shot. Plus, uh, there's an unmade script in there and a few other first drafts and storylines that the guys had novelized. So a really fantastic way to to look into the world of Space 1999 as it might have been. To everything that mm. might have been, as well as to being ah, to everything that was. Yeah, you see what I, I tried I to really, do see what you did, yes, really yes. poorly to do there. Anyway, no, no, uh, it's very good. if you pop along to the Jerry Anderson store, you can pre-order your copy of Maybe There uh, and also make sure you get your uh, limited edition Breakaway Day t-shirt before they go off sale tomorrow morning. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've also been talking, obviously, last week to Chris Thompson about the fantastic UFO Shadow Technical Operations Manual. I've got to get into my head now to stop saying the Space 1999 Moonbase Technical Operations Manual and now say the UFO <laughs> yes. Shadow Technical Operations Manual. That's it. Well, tomorrow night, uh, that's on the 20th at 6.30pm, I will be doing a live stream with Chris on our YouTube channel and across Periscope and Twitch and Facebook oh. and all those places. 
Exactly. Where we'll, we will be showing you pages from the book, various bits of art, showing you how Chris went about the, the job of putting this book together. Cool. Um, and just telling you more about it. So I'm looking forward to that very much. Yeah. I think it's going to be quite exciting. Yeah, uh, great. So, yeah, plenty of UFO stuff going on. Now, I think on the Saturday just gone in our email newsletter, you will have seen a link to Andrew Clark's fantastic classic Thunderbirds Lego set. This is part of the Lego Ideas thing. And a couple of years ago, they got all the way to the finish line with this, with 10,000 votes. But there was some confusion, I think, as to whether it was TAG, the ITV animated yeah. series in 2015 or whether it was classic and so that yeah. then caused some problems at lego hq i think i'm just ah, reading between I the lines see. here by the way there's no sure. this is, nobody said this to me so now there's a yeah. classic only version which is at 9,000 um uh, signatures at this point it may have crossed oh. over 10,000 by the time i'm saying this but if it hasn't yeah. yet please do go and sign to get it over the 10,000 threshold because then that goes to to lego hq for them to discuss it we might eventually maybe one day see Thunderbirds Lego, which would be very, very cool. And it's a really nice set he's designed. Mm, So, yes. Uh, On Thunderbirds note, did you go to Tabletop Gaming in Manchester and did you go and meet Andrew Harmon and did you play Thunderbirds Danger Zone? You did. No, no, uh, well, not no. you, obviously. Oh, I see. But uh, no, I, I, I hope some of you did and that you had a great time. Andrew is such a great ambassador for the game. Uh, I know lots of people are enjoying playing it. If you haven't got your copy yet, then go to ander.son slash danger zone. Um, and if you have got your copy and you want some music to play along to, then go to ander.son <laughs> slash danger zone music. Oh, um, great. And we've compiled a Spotify playlist that will keep <laughs> you going as oh, you play brilliant. Thunderbirds danger zone um nice. as you know this uh, episode of the podcast this pod i don't call them episodes what am i doing this mm. pod 223 we're going to give you the first 15 minutes of the vanishing ray or the vanishing ray uh from thunderbirds versus the hood they're two 44 45 ish minute adventures so very close to the original series in length full cast audios and that is going to be shipping on thunderbirds day on the 30th of september this month so we've only got lovely what 11 days to go yeah gosh you and i will also be doing um a fab live live from yes, the will. moxie hotel in slough yeah. um, so if you're in the area and would like to come and join us for a drink and uh, yep. maybe be a little part of a live audience on the night yep. wouldn't yeah. that be fun we'd love to That'd see you there yes do yeah. pop along mm-hmm. i think we're live from 6 30 on the 30th of september okay. so that'd be great uh, and on a thunderbirds theme but not a thunderbirds theme directly this friday it's the end of the road <gasps> get it for yeah. uh over a hundred designs t-shirt designs on the store we are having a big big clear out um so these there's i think actually 120 something 126 designs which are all going uh they will be no more so only available while stocks last or until we switch things off uh which will be at the end of the month so you've got about again about 10 days from friday to pick up the designs before they go probably forever so uh don't hold off. Anyway, there's no. loads more stuff going you? on. There's lots more things, and October's yep. looking uh, bonkers brilliant too. Is it? Um, Is it? Yes, yes. Oh, can't yeah. wait. Well, and we, you know, we've got things to talk about and announce very shortly as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Anyway, let's do that. Maybe next week or the week after. But for okay. now, that's the end of this week's Jerry Anderson news. That was the news. That was the news. <laughs> I just why did you go up at the end there? I was trying to provide a bit of variety, and then I thought, I bet he's going to riff on that, and you did, and it was beautifully done. It really felt like someone's record <laughs> player was broken. Yeah. <laughs> that wasn't the intention, but okay. It was brilliant. <sighs> now, uh, are you on Facebook? No. Oh. If you were, though, yes. and you were of a mind to, to join a very friendly Jerry Anderson-related community, mm. might I point you in the direction of the Jerry Anderson official podcast listeners group? Yes, I'd be there immediately if I was on oh, Facebook. Oh, great. There we are. Uh, now, I've been looking at their posts recently, and I thought I'd make a note of a few of, the, of, a few of them. Uh, this was from Gary Hodgkinson, who said, Very enjoyable pod this morning. Really enjoyed the long overdue interview with the very talented Chris Thompson. I know, I well can't believe that was our first Ooh. one. Isn't that bonkers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Says, I'm looking forward to seeing the uh, UFO Shadow Guide. The rest of the pod was fun. Can't beat the Fab Trio and Chris Dale's randomizer first thing on a Monday morning. Long. Hmm. Yeah. Quite uh, David Hollis said, I just got to the end of this magic three-part story. This is referring to the UFO audio uh, adventure. In some ways, it's one long story in three parts. It is. 
Yes. Uh, he says it goes way back in time before Shadow was even thought about. Some very nice back storylines of key people. I found it so nice uh, and it helped me to understand these key people better. I got into the storyline and I got hooked, wanting more. Well done, everyone. I think this is the best one yet. Uh, and that's from David Hollis. Oh, oh he crazy seems very indeed, pleased. David. Thanks for that. Yeah. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah. It's, no, it's a really lovely set. Everyone, everyone involved in that has, um, has worked their bottoms off, I would say. Uh, uh, have they? And it have shows. they sit down? Well, they can't now, but they, they sacrificed no. their ability to sit down for that wow. set. So there we go. Okay, so the least you could do is buy it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Earl Black says I hope we have Terry Adlam back on the show soon I just read there was a truck carrying toupees overturned on the M1 police are still combing the area Yes. Uh, also says Earl I believe I may have inadvertently stumbled upon where Richard James has a holiday house I accidentally found Loch Orin while flying over it just <laughs> under an hour ago in my flight simulator Nice. <laughs> Lock, Lock orange. orange. Brilliant. I like the sound of that. Uh, Mark Perkins says, following on from a comment on a Fireball XL5 site about the Fireball fleet going to be uh, going to at least XL27, is there any reference anywhere in Stingray about it being part of a fleet as implied by the three on its rear fin? Uh, Chris Thompson did a lovely article and some lovely renderings about that some time ago. Okay. If you go onto the Jerry Anderson website, jerryanderson.com, and search for Wasp fleet you will see it there Lovely. okay going back to uh i had put a call out for people finding random jerry anderson things in random places this is following uh hannah i think who visited a, a model railway exhibition only to see virgil standing on one of the platforms roger smith says uh not sure this counts but i was driving through gloucester today with the family stuck in a small jam when the car next to me on the wife's side dropped his window and kept saying something and pointed behind me we could not figure out what was going on so i dropped the wife's window it turned out that as a few of my fellow podstrons know i have a Fireball XL5 sticker on my boot. He was so happy to see it and told us his favourite shows and how they've never been bettered. After about five minutes, the traffic started moving again. So we said our goodbyes and we all started laughing, except the wife, who gave me a lecture about talking to strangers. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine to talk to them, just don't take sweeties from them. Yes, exactly. Uh, and finally, Chris Dale, our very own Chris Dale on a similar theme, said, uh, re Anderson things turning up in random places. When I was at school, around 20 to 25 years ago, they held a build a nativity scene diorama competition. One person had either run out of time or patience to create accurate characters of their scene, so it instead resorted to using action figures. The three wise men were therefore a wrestler, a cyberman, and the hood. <laughs> <laughs> what a great three wise men they made. Isn't that fantastic? Yeah. So, uh, yes, do let us know uh, if you've seen random Jerry Anderson things in random places. Either pop them on the Facebook group or email us at podcast.jerryanderson.com. I would love to know the weirdest one we can find. Yes. Yes. That'd be great. Wouldn't it? Good luck with that. <laughs> uh, Richard, would you like some value added content for this week's pod? <laughs> Oh, but that would make a change. Because <laughs> everything else is value-reducing content, sadly. That's, that's right. No, no. Uh, well, uh, there's no guest this week, despite what I said last week. No guest yeah, at all. Um, right. In fact, it's instead, it's a special excerpt from our new release, Thunderbirds vs. The Hood. Mm -hmm. So this never-before-heard full cast or audio production is adapted from the Thunderbirds Adventures in the TV Century 21 comic. And this particular release contains two stories. The Vanishing Ray, or oh. The Vanishing Ray, Ray. and yeah. Brains is Dead. Oh, what a title. Uh, oh, both it? are absolutely jam-packed with action and adventure. Uh, and these are basically new versions of the mini-albums of the 60s. So nice. If you have felt a lack of mini-albums in your life since 1968, or whenever the last one was released, then, well, we're here to save the day with these new ones. They are, oh, people have been waiting 50 years for this. I bet you some have. Um, <laughs> but they, they're longer than the standard 21-minute uh, mini-albums. They are much more like Thunderbirds episodes. They run to about right. 44, 40... I think one's 48 minutes, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, they will be hitting the streets, as it says so in the script here, just in time yeah. for Thunderbirds Day on the 30th of September. And if you do pre-order them, then I will I will work very closely with the team and Tim and Louise will do their best to look after you to make sure that they arrive with you before Thunderbirds Day. I can't make any promises, oh, but that's what yes. we will be doing our best to help you with that. Great. So, stand by for those. Uh, I'm very excited to hear the first 15 minutes of The Vanishing Ray. Yeah. 
Well, here we go. go I'm pressing play go now. On. All right, press it now. Ka-chunk. You're listening to an Anderson Entertainment production. This release is dedicated to the memory of Matt Zimmerman. Matt was the original voice of Alan Tracy and of many guest characters in Thunderbirds. He was a great talent who was always happy to share his stories with fans. And he'll be sadly missed. Five, four, three, are go. I believe that one is arriving now, but like they do have it, Parker. Your intellectual powers are no use against my skills at interrogation. I have a feeling that we have not seen the last of that hairless gentleman. Curse Lady Penelope! She will pay for this. Anderson Entertainment presents Thunderbirds, The Vanishing Ray. Adapted by Ben Page. And so we believe that the helmet unearthed at Sutton Hoo belonged to King Rywald. Though it seems we will never be able to know with absolute certainty. Wow. Look at that. Wow. But if there are no more questions, please follow me. Uh, Mr. Hackenbacker. Lovely tie. Hmm? Hackenbacker? Oh, oh, yes. I'm Hackenbacker. Uh, the name's Steele. I understand you have something of a scientific nature that may be of interest to my uh, department. Yes, uh, yes, I do. Uh, thank you for meeting me. Uh, it's here, in this briefcase. Uh, how the devil did you get it past building security? I'm sorry to say it wasn't too difficult. Uh, I suppose not, for a man of your qualifications. All right, Hackenbacker. What is it we're dealing with? Perhaps it would be best to show you. Is that a parcel? Stamped and addressed? Oh, uh, I've taken a bit of a security precaution. I see. A strange method, but I'm always in favor of security. Is that a torch? No mere flashlight, Mr. Steele. Uh, you see, I've developed this theory about the uh, refraction of light and, and... Wow! Oh, wow! Huh? What? Uh, is this man with you? I I'm afraid not. Would you mind uh, taking my picture? Uh, listen, we're having a private conversation here, so if you don't mind... Oh! Oh, oh, oh no! You're no tourist. Indeed not, my cerebral friend. Oh, I am something of a photographer. The parcel, hand it over. Your face, it's a mask. Oh, oh no, no. Stop. What the... Oh, 
wait. A uh, package. I need help. Oh, take it easy, mate. You've got something to post, eh? No need to fret. I'll see to it. This goes out today. You can rely on Royal Mail, uh, sir. I ne need help. Have a nice day. <sighs> So, you thought you could escape me. But what have you done with the top secret device? You... I, I know you. Silence! You are my prisoner. What have you done with the package? Where is the package? Tell me now. Where is the package? Beg pardon, milady. There's a package for you. Thank you, Parker. Hmm. No return address, I see. I'm afraid not. Shall I open it for you, milady? Please do. Perhaps it's from a secret admirer. But all the same, use caution. Very good. It appears to be a torch, milady. There's no message. Strange gift. I don't suppose that it might come from one of your secret admirers, Parker? I am unaware of anyone who might be carrying a torch like this for me, milady. It works. What a pretty beam. Well, I never... Cool. We've lost half the table. No, Parker. Part of it seems to have been made invisible to the naked eye. Perhaps we should conduct an experiment. Do you think that Lillian would mind if we use some of her tea biscuits? It seems as good a use as any, as the hardly edible milady. Watch this. They've blinking gone! What is it, milady? A disappearing ray, Parker. Scientists have been trying to perfect something like this for years. Pity Brains isn't here. This sort of thing would be right up his street. My guess is that the principle is an optical illusion. The focal point of the concentrated beam is alien to the retina of the eye. Therefore, the mind does not register the object once the light has touched it. Hmm. Mm. Alas, invisibility does not seem to improve the taste. Swipe me. I could have done with something like that when I was trying to knock over the Bank of England. It is postmarked Central London. Oh, that tells us very little. It would appear we have a mystery on our hands, Parker. Oh, swipe me, me choppers. Yes, indeed, my lady. Clearly, he was no tourist at all, sir. When I came to, he and Hackenbacker had disappeared, along with the parcel. Mm. Can we trust this Hackenbacker fellow? Well, we don't know where he comes from. Hackenbacker is certainly an alias. But he's done a lot of good in the world with the inventions he shared publicly over the years. A regular boffin of the sort we'd love to have in the lab. Mm. And the parcel? Mm, I have no idea. But I did manage to get a look at the address. Crichton Ward Manor. Crichton Ward? The old stately home? Property of Lady Penelope. A uh, dull society lady type with some ties to the fashion industry. Check it out, Steele. Yes, sir. I'm on my way. Intellectual power.
power is of no use against my skills at interrogation. You may be the brains at international rescue, but here you are just putty in my hands. You fiend! <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and sleep, weak fool. You've told me all I need to know. An invisibility ray. I must have it. I would be invisible. No more disguises. The perfect cover. I will pay a visit to Crichtonward Manor, and I will get this ray. Even if I have to kill Lady Penelope to get it. <laughs> Deal to base. I've arrived at Lady Penelope's. I'll use the book salesman line, Chief. Be careful, Steele. Keep in contact through your surveillance. This Lady Penelope seems innocent enough, but we can't take any chances. Hackenbacker's life is at stake, and depending on what he's invented, perhaps the fate of the nation. Rely on me, sir. Uh, good morning. I wonder if the lady of the house would be interested in the new universal cookbook. Search me, mate. Better ask her ladyship. She's in the library. This way. It's awfully good of you to call, but as you see, I have every book on cookery ever published. Hmm. I haven't made a sale in weeks. Oh, you poor man. Come into the drawing room and have some tea. Have a seat. I'll just ring for Parker. Chief, I see the package open on the table. The item appears to be a torch. Did you say something? Uh, no. Thank you for your kindness, Mum. On second thought, I shouldn't stay for tea. Nothing will help me feel better like making a sale or two, and I have a feeling it's going to be easier than I thought. Ah, well, I understand. It's been a pleasure. Drop in any time you're passing, and good luck. Thank you. Uh, goodbye. Goodbye. If you'll follow me... Well, he certainly was a shrewd one. Not quite shrewd enough, my lady. He may have managed to nick the invisible ray, but I managed to find it in his pocket. Parker! I've told you before about being light-fingered with our guests. But why should that nice man have taken the torch in the first place? Perhaps all is not as it appears. Quite right. Ah... It sounds as if he might have caught on to your pickpocketing, Parker. I hear him returning. I'll investigate, my lady. Bexo soup. Oh, beg your pardon. Good morning. I wonder if the lady of the house would be interested in the new uh, universal cookbook. Hey, eh? Not another one? Oh well. You better come in. Another salesman for universal cookbooks, my lady. Oh dear. 
As I've just informed a colleague of yours, I have no further need for cookbooks. I keep a complete collection. Too bad Lil never consults them. Oh, dear. I am so sorry to have disturbed you. Not at all. Parker has just served tea. Would you join me for a cup? I'd be delighted. Parker, it would appear that there are more salesmen than Universal cookbooks. Quite so, milady. There it is. I was prepared to kill, but perhaps that will not be necessary. Oh, well, oh, hey, hey, to, come on. <laughs> to hear the middle and the conclusion of the vanishing ray, and yes. to hear the entirety the of, the of the story, shocking, yes, obviously, yeah. and to hear the shocking brains is dead. Be sure to pre-order yeah. your copy from the Jerry Anderson store today. Uh, wow. Shop.jerryanderson.com. If you just type in verses uh, into the search bar, you'll find it there. Um, yeah. Or go to ander.dotson slash hood. Uh, okay. uh, and you'll find it there as well it does wow. sound fantastic they've done a, such a brilliant job and listening through it there's so many kind of hairs in the back of your neck standing up moments where you just hear the interplay between Penny and Parker or Jeff and Penny or the brothers yeah. you know yeah. and um, and Justin T. Lee's hood in particular is so good it's yeah. just like the original they've done a fantastic <laughs> job so yes uh, looking forward to hearing those in full in due course as I'm sure you all are now uh, yeah, but uh, Jamie... What? In the story, Brains is dead... Yes. Just between you and me... Yeah, what? I mean, is he dead? Well, that's what the title says, but you'll have to yeah. listen to find out, won't what? you? Oh, I thought you'd just let slip a little, you know... Is no, I mean, it's a great title, but I couldn't possibly say what happens in the end. <sighs> All right, uh, now... Over on YouTube, uh, yes. people have been commenting beneath previous pods and also our Fab Facts, which is also posted there separately. Uh, for example, underneath uh, the Fab Fact about the unmade episode of UFO uh, that was on a recent podcast, Eamon McDermott posted, It's a great shame. I've just finished re-watching my complete set of UFO and it really deserved at least another couple of years, in my opinion. You feel like you're just getting into the mindset of the UFO world when you're cut off, mm. leaving you with so many unanswered questions and so many possible storylines to develop. It was the unhappy endings of a number of episodes that lifted the whole concept of UFO and set it apart as superior to other sci-fi shows at that time. I'm not sure I'd be interested in a remake. For me, Ed Bishop was the boss, aided and abetted, of course, by his brilliant co-stars. Fair enough, Eamon. Absolutely. But, no, I know what you mean, though. There's, there's a yeah. certain tone to it, which is um, mm. it's, it's yeah. very specific to that show, isn't it? Yeah. And it's true, it does, It does. you know, we do sort of feel bereft having just the one season. Yeah. You can imagine it having run and run, but, you know, obviously other things happen in the world and just wasn't to be. Uh, John Smith says, I wanting think... wanting uh, more. Indeed, true enough. John Smith says, I think the Patriot storyline and plot sounds really interesting. A UFO crashing in Africa, then an alien held hostage, definitely should be tried as an audio story, and maybe a film, providing it holds true to the original idea, sort of outer limits, but with a decent budget. Yeah, that would be nice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Zipalitra says, I'd love to know what other unmade episodes there were of other series, such as Thunderbirds or Captain Scarlet. Wasn't series two of Thunderbirds meant to be the same length as the first, but got cut down to six? Surely there's got to have been another lot of scripts submitted for the remaining un uh, unmade episodes, right? Mm. Oh. Possibly. Maybe. Are they out there? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, finally for now, Tom Senior, I was a little too young for UFO when it was first broadcast. I loved the effect, uh, very Anderson. Unfortunately, I simply could not understand the more adult themes. It went over my head. Frankly, the show was very scary. And when UFO was repeated decades later, I had already bonded with Space 1999 and there was no going back. Shame, really. UFO looks amazing today, despite the silly costumes and those blooming purple wigs. And that's from Tom Senior. <laughs> Yeah, fair enough. I mean, I've got a blooming purple wig right next to me right now. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. No. Yeah, exactly. It's very rare that I wear it. I'm very, not, not on Moonbase that often, you see. So. Yeah. Uh, so there we are. So you can find previous pods on YouTube, of course, or you can listen to us on a variety of platforms. But if you do, why not leave us a review or a rating or a revating? Five stars, if possible, just to tickle the algorithms and let other people know that we are there. And you can also, of course, uh, copy and paste our link to 
on our, your social medias. Uh, so <laughs> Are other you people, sure? can, yeah, I think so. Uh, they can <laughs> click the link. They'll be taken straight to the Jerry Anderson podcast, and they'll have the time of their lives. Yes, of course they will. Of course. Um, and yes. if you want an easy to share link, then my oh, yeah. favourite one is jerryandersonpodcast.com slash listen, because then it gives oh. you a page that links out to Apple Podcasts. Google Play uh, and um, uh, and Spotify, I think. So all the links are in great. one place. How's that? Yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah. great. Mm, yeah. Like it. Mm, good. Mm, excellent. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, we've come mm. to that stage, haven't we, in the podcast? <gasps> I think we might have done. Where everyone breathes a sigh of relief because the bit they've been yeah. waiting for is finally here. No, it's not the <laughs> yeah, end. That's right. It's the bit no, before no, no. the end. Yeah. It's the randomizer. Oh. Right. What's on it this week? What a great noise. Well, it's random, Richard, so we don't know until, the, <gasps> That's until true. Chris presses the big red button on his randomizer and displays a random episode on the randomizer's printout. Uh, and he watches it and says things about it. So let's hope it's a good one, because if it's not, well, there's no one to blame because it's random. So uh, here is Chris Dale, the randomizer, with the randomizer. Word, where are we today? Welcome to our base. You are beneath the island of Var. Oh, hello there. Mr. Nucella, isn't it? Yes. Yes, Mr. Chidora. <laughs> yes, well, uh, Marina has told me about you, uh, so, uh, how's about just uh, letting us go, eh? Certainly. All we require is some information. Oh, well, I'm not sure I have any I can give you. Ah, but you will. Oh, I see. Yes, I rather get the feeling you've got a bit of a hankering to press the button on the randomizer today, am I correct? Very smart. Oh, well, there was no need to kidnap us. I'm more than happy to let you, although the technology is a bit complicated. Explain, Jedora. It is simple. Very well. Now. Oh, well, looks like you've got the hang of it. I guess we'll be on our way then. They will remain our prisoners. Oh, bother. Okay, well, let's see what we have today. Now give me the information, or Marina will suffer. Wait, now steady on. There's no call for that. It would be a lengthy business trying to make you talk. Unaided, but talk you shall. Well, yes, fine. I'm more than happy to talk about... Brightonia on sea. You will be able to watch on our monitors. Well, yeah, but I've never even seen it. Shut up and listen. Yes, I suppose that really is the only way to experience it. Well then, here's Lavender Castle. Show them, Chidora. Lavender Castle. A place of legend, fabled right across the universe. This is our quest to find it. So, welcome back to the randomizer, Lavender Castle, with Brightonia on Sea. And uh, for those of us who, uh, who or th- those of you, I should say, because I know, and a lot of you know, that um, this is not a show I have ever sat down and watched all the way through. I've only seen this on the randomizer. Same with Torchy. But unlike Torchy, uh, I have enjoyed everything I've seen of Lavender Castle so far. It's, it's like, um, you know... Um, being presented with a, a glass of champagne, you know, it's, it's light and bubbly and and happy. Whereas I don't know, being presented with an episode of Torchy is like oh, I don't know, it's like drinking toilet water, quite honestly. But this all sounds very lovely. It all looks very lovely, and so far it uh, hasn't really let me down. So let's see what today's episode has in store. Well, ooh, the paradox is being followed. Someone looking at it through a telescope. Ah, uh, oh wow! Tonic holiday brochure said it would be. Oh my goodness, that is a gorgeous. Well, I was going to say matte painting, but it's not. It's a kind of combination CGI of. Yeah! It's beautiful. The paradox has landed on this uh, very nice looking planet. I seem to recall that image was in some of the. Uh, Waiting for Captain Thrice, sir. Publicity artwork or original artwork of Rodney Matthews. Someone else will be able to correct me on that. But um, what a gorgeous image! That's lovely. Sproggle like these, I'm going to get some more. So having landed on a lovely planet, they're, uh, well... Ready? Not hungry! Oh. Some of them are going to stay inside and eat. Sproggle has eaten all of the nice watermelons, so he's going to go get some more. Because what could go wrong picking fruit on a an alien planet? Well, you could get abducted like that. A hook round your throat, no less. Sproggle's been gone a long time. I'm going to look for him. But, oh, well, the longer the better, Miss Laika. Oh, never mind. I'm not hungry. Why does she always go after Sproggle? It's quite sweet. 
but it does rather give the impression that no one else cares. Oh, and now she's been snatched. Gone a long time. Something's wrong. I'm going after them. I'm coming with you. Let's go out there and get kidnapped. Why not? Longer. We're not hungry. Oh. Right. That's it, sir. Oops. We thought I'd made a souffle. Oh dear. Blown his top. Blown his top like Robert. I've not seen him do this before. Oh. Ah, quick recharge and he'll be as good as <laughs> Just plug him into the mains, okay. It's going to be virtually unmanned. You'd better bring your new invention with you. But I haven't tested it yet. Never mind, bring it anyway. Hey, where's Captain Thrice and all this? Ah, oh, Sproggle's bag. Ooh. And only one normal. Normal, that's the name of the fruit he was going to get. You look over there, I'll go this way. Well, no, let's just go back to the ship. I mean, who really needs Sproggle? Like his dress. Oh. Is he? Is he? Oh no. Is he? Is he's been snatched as well? And now there goes Roger. Oh. So it was you who sent the holiday. Captain Thrice and Walking Stick had apparently already gone out to explore. It was atrocious. Oh, there he is. No one leaves my. I like this guy. Uh, the the pirate uh, captain. Not dead. You made me look a fool in front of Dr. Agar. Short Fred Led, that's the chap's name, yes. He's fun. Oh, He's a very cool design and a very nice, very nice voice. A very stupid character. I'm going to leave you here. And somehow he's managed to overpower all our heroes by himself. So you're really going to leave us here? <laughs> I am. Good. I just said I was, didn't I? You can't leave us here without water. We'll die. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. No, there's water over there. Lovely. Oh, again, that's a, a CGI shot. Um, but it does look very nice. Again, I mean, I've just seen, like, just a few moments ago, someone online saying, Oh, well, CGI is this load of rubbish, isn't it? You can do, do that in two seconds. But no, CGI stuff can look just as, as lovely and beautiful as uh, as practical stuff. And this episode is, is a really good example. Will it do? So, everyone has been caught. <laughs> and Short Fred Led is made off with a paradox. But of course... Oh, he <laughs> shaved the top of a tree there. But of course, we know someone is still on board. See what you can do with it. Keep your voice down. We don't want to raise any false hopes. Oh, that's nice. So where's he making for? What's he doing? I've waffled over his plan. Paradox, what shall we do with the crew and the paradox, what? <laughs> I don't think he has a plan somehow. Well, I suspect the, the drink has gone to his head. What shall we do with the crew and the paradox, what shall we Oh, he's got a lovely robot parrot as well. <laughs> oh, okay. That's a fairly grim fate he thinks he's left the paradox crew to. But the sun is burning down on our heroes. Sproggle thirsty like her. Try not to think about it, Sproggle. I'm not In fact, try not to think about anything ever. Oh, you already follow that policy, don't you? Thirsty. Oh, I love the, the animation on his uh, little head bobble thing. Very sweet. So I think Roger has got a remote control for the paradox, perhaps? Which uh, Short Fred Led is now trying to land on the bridge of his ship. Or the deck, I should say. <laughs> kind of down? Yep, he's down. <laughs> Sleep well, my lovely. <laughs> You'll be back scrubbing decks in the morning. He called me his lovely. Yep, Squeak a lot is. Uh, Almost back to to charge. He's just standing in the corner, staring at his um, no use collapsed it. souffle. Ah, that fixed it. <gasps> it's working. It does work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I said, if you just throw it on the floor, it'll start working. I reckon you cooks a good meal, squeak a lot. <laughs> oh. I think I'll get you to cook for me. <laughs> and now, short Fred Led is raiding the kitchen. Huh. You know, considering these are only, well, less than 10 minute instalments, it's quite an effective and believable takeover of the ship that he's managed to uh, to carry out here. Don Rog. No. You know what to do. Although it doesn't make our heroes look particularly bright. Uh, here. To have been uh, defeated by old uh, Short Fred Led here. I've got it. Now, these buttons are for diving. <laughs> What's going on? 
I, I think some of this ship CGI is reused. I recognize some of these shots, but it's <laughs> some very nice animation on Fred hurtling around the cabin. That was a bump to the noggin. Speed for rolling! Oh, he's stuck in the doorway. This is as this shot seems to have been digitally zoomed in. Doesn't look as crisp as the uh, the other shots around it. So somehow Roger is gonna. Yes, he's managed to bring the ship right back to the point where it took off from. Even though all he had was a little remote with four buttons on it. Oh, he's clever, is Roger. This is the first time I've ever felt seasick. <laughs> oh, <laughs> gosh. Oh, well. Vomiting. There we go. You don't often get that from a Jerry Anderson character. Uh, now, hand over the Not on screen, but uh, clearly there was audio to suggest he was uh, doing it off screen. I believe that in true pirate tradition, the loser of a battle um, walks the plank. <laughs> oh, I love the way Thrice is standing there with his, the fingers of his hands sort of steepled together. He's very polite. So, that's it. Oh. No, they're making him walk the plank. Who's going to have the courage to push me off, eh? Oh, <laughs> oh yes, that's right. Took the ship. Of course, he wasn't the first Anderson pirate to walk the plank because uh, Captain Goat did that as well. Thank you. <laughs> Squeaky just chucked the. Was that a vacuum cleaner? What was that about? I don't know what that. I'll get him next time. Well, it's funny, nevertheless. Spelling's atrocious. See, atrocious. Ah, no, it's ah, it's not. Well, short Fred Led got what he deserved. Now, another episode appearance on the series. In Brightonia on sea, all those in favour say aye. 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 <laughs> oh, Sproggle had some cool shades. Um, well. It's an odd note to end the episode on, but I'm fine with it because overall that was another enjoyable episode of Lavender Castle. I, As I said, I'm not familiar with this show, so I don't know how many appearances Short Fred Led made. I know we've got at least one more, but I somehow get the feeling that he was seen less often than Dr. Aegon, but he's always great fun whenever he does turn up. Some very nice visuals, actually, of this, this planet. It was just lovely to look at. So, you know, maybe it's not great, not, not too many great moments for our heroes, but some uh, lovely villainy from a very fun villain in Short Fred Lead. It was another very good episode of Lavender Castle. Oh, oh, it's so cute, isn't it? Fun, fun, fun. I yeah. just love that Very theme nice. by Chris Bimrell. It's so lovely. Yeah, he's a clever chap. Very fantastical it is. Um, yeah. And there we go. I mean, a little kind of in-jokes of Brightonia on sea. I mean, it's very kind of... Um, <laughs> yeah, it is rather, isn't it? It's very dad's sense of humour, actually. And I, uh -huh. I think that's fine. You can say it's on the nose. It, it, it sort of it yeah. does fit. But I kind of like yeah. the little little twist of dad joke in there. It's yeah. um, yes, very nice. nice. Anyway, I'm sure that will have made some listeners very very happy indeed. Particularly Simpson Slips 24. Yes, I can, I can hear him mm. laughing hear him and smiling right now. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so there may be some more Lambda Castle next week or another week, but it's well, random because that's yeah, the nature random. of the, the randomizer. It's random. Yes, thank you. Anyway, yeah. thanks, Chris. More of you next yep. week and more of us next yep. week, too. Have you got anything else you yes. want to add? Well, I, I did see one post on YouTube that I'd really like to read out because it caught my attention from Eddie Hansen. Oh, really? Uh, now, Eddie says, From the mind of Jerry Anderson spilled forth an amazing collection of unforgettably creative shows and from his loins, the beautiful Jamie Anderson, oh. who continues to delight and inform us loyal devotees, keeping alive the memory and value of his father's wonderful oh. work. Thank you, Jamie. Oh, and thank you, says Eddie, other guy who chats with him. You're oh. nice too. Oh, he's talking about Chris isn't there, that isn't nice? he? Yeah, lovely. Um, I don't think... <laughs> Well, I mean, you don't no, obviously, chat with Chris, do you? he's talking. He's yeah. talking about yeah. you. Well, what a, so what, we a nice, what a nice note. I mean, yeah, not Thought often people one. use the word loins these days, is it? So <laughs> thanks, Eddie. Loins, no, yeah, it's a great word. That's lovely. No, I, you know, the yeah. sentiment is much appreciated. So thank you kindly yeah. for that. Quite well. Uh, yeah, that's all for now from me. I'm done. Spent. Over. Finito. Kaput. <sighs> Any more of those? I got zilch. Nada. Okay. In that case, hmm? should we wrap this thing up? Let's wrap it up. 
Brilliant. Okay, thanks for having us, Podstrons. We'll be back in your ears next week with Pod 224. Unless, of course... Don't. Don't. We can't, we've had a count. Anything. I'm not going to say nope. anything. No, okay. okay. Good. Well, we'll definitely see you next week then. We will definitely see you next week. Phew. Okay. Bye. <sighs> Bye for now. Tempting fate there, almost. Do not, don't, don't tempt fate. Well, it's your, everything's fine. It's your fault. You should have. I don't, um, I don't, everything's you know, fine. You should have not got, not got poorly last time. You silly sod. Uh, out of interest, how far did Benji and Nick get into their their run before uh, one of them interest. decided? Yeah, was it what we're talking weeks, months? Well, before their first sicky pulling. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to have it. I'm going to look it up, actually. So ah. uh, it was Benji and Nick's show. And it's the Star Trek episode. That was because I had to step oh, in yes. for Nick on that, didn't I? I think. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. What was that story? Mm-hmm. It's the ones with uh, the, the Romulans appear and there's a big attack on the ship and all the masonry is falling down in their big spaceship. Do you know the episode I mean? No. Oh, well, that's not very helpful, is it? <laughs> no. Someone somewhere For, will, will... The original series? Uh, yes, the original series. Yes. Mm-hmm. Balance Can't of Terror? Remember. Could be. Was it? I mean, it could be. Sounds like a Star Trek episode. Possibly. Anyway, it, it was. Yeah. It was at some point. Uh, right. Twenty or so. Twenty-five episodes in. Uh, was that really? Yeah. So ten percent of our run. Gosh. Before Briggs pulled a sickie. Mind you, it's just like him, isn't it? I know. He's such a diva. Probably just yeah. broke a nail or something. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Exactly. <laughs> no, I think actually he was quite poorly. Uh, oh, thank you. Yeah. No, so I shouldn't be. I shouldn't be mean. But no, we're no. we're going to soldier on, and we did this. And uh, yeah, well done us. Good. Uh, hadn't you better go and feed the uh, cockerel? Yeah, he's crowing very loudly, isn't he? he? Is. It's not even the yeah. one that does the uh, stingray impression. It's a different one now. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, well, good. Yeah. All right, I'll go and do that. And you tend to your yeah. animals and I'll speak to you soon. All right. See you later. Bye. You have been listening to the Jerry Anderson Podcast. Wasn't it fun? You have been listening to an Anderson Entertainment production. 